Coogan Cassis here at the Pro SW Gym here in Loughton. With me, I have Cruiserweight Tony Conquest. How are you, sir? Very well, thanks, mate. Very well. You look very different. Why? You look like you've shedded some weight for a start. Uh, a little bit, yeah. It's fight week, so obviously I'm a little bit lighter than what I normally am. I've got to cut a little bit, yeah. A couple of sunbeds as well, you said earlier on. Hawaiian tropping. Yeah, a little bit of the old uh, Simply Tanning donut, you know. It's yeah. all right. Yeah, you've got you just plugged a, a, ta like a tanning place. Do you know what? I just have, yeah, and I ain't even told them. Make sure they watch it, Cassis and Elder. Um, you're back in action. You had a, a win, a points win over Rudan six weeks ago. Yep, yeah, just a, a comeback fight. It was, I wanted to get him out of there. I dropped him a couple of times, but I couldn't finish him off. He's quite a tough lad, but the ring rust was there as well, and it was good to get the full six rounds in. So, But this one will be an eight-rounder, and I'm fighting Jiri Savinia. He's quite experienced himself. He's, he's boxed for titles before. He's bit half and half of his record, but he's quite a big, awkward lump. So I'm expecting a, a tough time there. But I want to want to look more explosive than I did last time out. You've had a couple of disappointing uh, moments, shall we say, in your career to date. Uh, notably the, the Neil Dawson one and also the Mackenzie defeat. Which one was worse? Um, I'd say that the Neil Dawson one was probably worse. I got starts so quick. I just got caught cold, and that was that was what it was. The over one, I've got no excuses for him. Just, you know, it's boxing with big fellas. You get it on the chin, you go down. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't recover from them. But, yeah, you know, both of them hurt. Of course, they hurt. It's, you're a man, it's your pride at the end of the day. It hurts your feelings, you know. But, fingers crossed, if I can get through this fight as well in good fashion, maybe there could be a return for me and Oval for the British and Commonwealth. For me, I, I don't think people are queuing up to fight him at the minute, so... That's an avenue I'd like to explore and fingers crossed we'll get it on again. I know he's a nice fellow and we're, we're quite friendly, so I'm sure that he'd, he'd give me a shot at it. The Neil Dawson defeat obviously was a shot because it, you know, it ended so early in, in, in the first round. And then, like I said, to come back from that and then, I said, suffer a, a, another stoppage defeat, it, it takes some going again for you to get motivated to do what you love doing. It does, yeah, but the thing is, if you, if you love the sport and you love what you do, you know, you'll put the miles in, you'll go running, you'll push yourself, and if you want it bad enough, you will get yourself back in there. I mean, after the Neil Dawson defeat, I've become a Commonwealth champion. I've only had 16 pro fights, and I've won like a Southern area, which is a prestigious belt to me. I, I was well happy with that, and then WBA International, I was over the moon with that. And to win a Commonwealth, you know, it's... It's uh, more than what a lot of people thought I would do. I only had 20 odd amateur fights, so it's quite a big, big accomplishment, really. But the only thing I've ever really wanted from boxing and dreamed of is a Lonsdale belt. And hopefully, in the next couple of years, I'll achieve that dream and keep it for life. That's all I've ever wanted. We see uh, a lot of boxers after suffering their first defeat or whatever they contemplate the weight, weight issue. You're fully comfortable where you are at cruiserweight. Yeah, I'm not even a big cruiserweight, but the, the golf in weight is so great. If I wanted to do light heavyweight, I'd have to get down to 12.7. And I walk around about the 15 mark, and that's walking around. I mean, some cruisers go up to 16, some even heavier than that. So, yeah, I'd, um, I'm very comfortable. I've got no, no weight issues or nothing like that, other than I'd, I'd like to be a bit more ripped up, but I think that's everyone. Including me. <laughs> can, can you see how he's multitasking there? Did you see that? I see that's that's very. We won't mention yeah. what he was doing. No, but he was multitasking. Yeah, that was very quite Very good, stylish, James. That. Very good. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's good. I might try that in a minute. I'll try that in a minute <laughs> as well. Uh, talking of Oval McKenzie, um, he's going to have a fight with o o Olaf Alabi um, in the coming future. So that's a, that'll be a great fight that way. Do you know what? I'd pay for a ticket to see that. That'd be a terrific fight. Obviously. Oval is a big cruiserweight. I mean, Oval's not a small man. He's a physically strong man as well, but he himself admits he can still drop down to light heavy. And Oval's a very big cruiserweight and a strong man. And he, as you've seen with the fights of Marco Huck, he can war for 12 rounds. So you'd have to favour Oval in that respect, wouldn't you, for 12 rounds. It's a long way to go for a big, strong cruiserweight. Mm. So Absolutely. No, uh, I was talking to Frank Warren when he told us about the fight a few weeks ago. It just... Seems like one of them unmissable dust-ups at Cruiserweight that you wouldn't want to miss. Definitely a fan-friendly fight, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, we saw, um, obviously, Cleverly and Bellier in a rematch um, last year, and then Cleverly's gone back to light heavyweight, um, had a stint at Cruiserweight, but then realised he wasn't, in his words, a Cruiserweight. So he's come back to light heavyweight. Bellier's still there. So what would you make of all that? Yeah, I mean, obviously... He's, 
not, doesn't feel that he's a cruiserweight, which is understandable. I think he was 13 something and 14 something. I think he was struggling to keep the extra weight on. I think he had to eat to get to that weight. Whereas Bellew's just, well, you've seen his form since he's been a cruiserweight. He's a lot better. Even as an amateur, when I first started, he was winning the AJ titles at 91 kilos. And he was a, a real punch. I remember seeing him thinking, wow. Like that's, that's, I remember not seeing him knock out John Lewis Dickens, thinking that's, that's an impressive bit of power that is. So obviously he's got his snap back and I've heard that he's fighting for a world title quite soon against Hernandez. That's, that's a brilliant shout out for him. Brilliant. I'd, like, I'd like to see him do it. It'd be nice to see one of our lads grab a belt and bring it back over. It'd be lovely. Opens up the division. Certainly does. Certainly does. The cruiserweight division is quite open. I mean, as you've seen before, all you've got to do is get a win and you're straight back in the mix. You get a title fight again straight away. There's not, not so much depth in the division. So it's very easy to get back into a title picture. You've just got to string a couple of wins together and you're back in there. So fingers crossed after this Friday, I'll be looking at a title fight very soon again, hopefully. Is he multitasking again? He's is multitasking he? again. Oh, yeah. Multitasking again. If you, only you could see what James Helder was doing now. We can't mention it, but you can see what he's doing. It's I would say it was unprofessional, talented. but you know, he's. You he, can, he, he, he you looks can like a pro at you, you can absolutely say it's unprofessional. No, he looks like a pro at doing that. Very skilled. So I'd give us something to talk about as well. <laughs> but um, obviously, you're looking obviously to get a win this week at your call, out of the way, and then sort of just get your career back on track, really, son. Pretty much, yeah. Like I say, I just want to get in there this weekend. Look exciting back to what I normally look like and, uh, and go from there and see what, what the other doors and avenues open and see where I can go. But like I said, I'd love to box for the British Commonwealth. That'd be fantastic if I could get back in and fight for that again. I'd, I'd be well happy with that. All right, well, listen, Tony Conquest, thank you very much for talking to the Cassius and Helder Show here on Box Nation. Uh, said look forward to Friday night at your call and then uh, onwards and upwards from there. Yeah, that's it, mate. Fingers crossed. As we, as we end the interview, James Helder is still multitasking. He's looking at the time, isn't he? That's what he's doing. What he can't wait to get away. Yeah, of course. Cool, he wants to get down the pub, doesn't he? <laughs> Big boy. <laughs> Coogan Cassius, Tony Conquest here at the Pro SW Gym. Thank you very much.